So, Mr Habib, <laughs> uh, reform, one of the things I want to get stuck into with you tonight as well is about the polling. There's been a, a lot of polling coming out about you guys, putting you at about 10%. Yeah, and what? I think we've had half a dozen polls putting us at 10% or higher. And that's twice where we were three months ago. So, you know, there's definitely a sea change in people's attitudes towards um, the two main parties. And, uh, you know, thankfully, we're doing well off the back of it. And if we can bring some sense to the political landscape in 2024, that would be a wish come true. But let me be blunt. Do yeah, you okay. think... Let me be blunt. I mean, I'm going to start my year as I mean to go on. Yeah. Do you think reform can actually achieve anything or will it just split the vote? Well, what, when you say split the vote, do you mean between the con-socialists and the socialists? Well, what Otherwise I mean... known as the Conservative Party and the Labour Party, respectively. <laughs> you know, if you vote for the Conservatives, what are you going to get? They've delivered high taxation, they've delivered massive spending, they've de 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 delivered massive borrowing. They've turned their backs on the um, history, culture, values of the United Kingdom. They've opened up our borders, record legal migration, completely uncontrolled illegal migration. Um, why would you think that they deserve to be in office any more than Keir Starmer does, who doesn't deserve to be in office. But there'll be Neither a lot of people. There'll be a lot of people of the right, and they perhaps I don't know traditionally have an, um, an affiliation with the Tories. Maybe their parents voted Tory. Maybe they've always voted Tory sure. or whatever. Absolutely. So even if it's just a connection and a loyalty to the Tories, you've got those set of people. You've got the set of people that actually, because who knows what's going to happen between now and the next election? Anything can happen. They can turn yeah. it all around, and we're going to come on to David Davis's letter in a second. Uh, you know where they believe that it's not a lost cause yet. The next election. So there is a potential that those votes could be split. And we saw that. I mean, I saw that in my seat uh, where, yeah. where I call home, which is Hull West and Hessel in the 2019 election. What we basically did is we split the Brexit vote and then the Labour Party got re-elected, even though more people had collectively voted against Labour than for them. Yeah, but, you know, we're not in business. Reform UK didn't form in order to be a weather vane or some kind of navigating yardstick for the Conservative Party. We came about because people like me, who would otherwise be perfectly happy running their business, were tearing their hair out at the state of the nation and the inability of either party to govern. And so if the Conservative Party, by some miracle, started being Conservative, uh, protecting the United Kingdom, promoting conservative values, reducing taxes, reducing regulation, getting rid of this ridiculous inexorable march to economic emas emas emasculation that is net zero. If they started doing all of that, they wouldn't have people like us, but they won't start doing it. I know we're going to talk about David Davis's letter. Well, let's they talk won't about start... it. Let's get yeah. out. That's a so nice David... segue. Talk about uh, but, but, it. But, but I'll just quickly finish. But they, won't, they won't do it because they're impregnate, impregnated with something called One Nation Conservatives. They're the largest part of their parliamentary party, and they're basically Liberal Democrats. They don't believe in conservative values. So they talk about being a broad church and having a broad set of values. What they are is a divided church, mm. unable to craft an ideology, and uh, absolutely unable to deliver conservative policies. They don't deserve to be in office. One of the... The, the letter that we're referring to, David Davis wrote uh, in the mail, he's writing Happy New Year to all of the Tory faithful and all the rest of it, and he references a few different elections, uh, 1992, uh, 1997. He references medieval battles, and he's basically a <laughs> rallying cry. He's basically a rallying cry to, I would say, his own party, uh, talking about what you're just referring to then, about infighting. And he says, and I found this line quite interesting, uh, discipline wins elections just as it wins battles and one of the challenges that the Tory party have got and I cannot understand for the life of me how people that are actually in politics don't grasp this when you turn and divide and argue among yourself not only are you neglecting the voters and the things that actually matter up and down in the country absolutely you are just tearing your vote apart because now what people are doing is going right do I want that do I want this do I want this are they the party you're distracting and you're just creating your own self-destruction yeah so what's happened with the Conservative Party since Margaret Thatcher left office and it's progressively happened is that they have tacked left 
in order to try and see off Labour. And they've become an incredibly effective election-winning machine. And it was all fine, well and good, until they actually faced some challenges, which required an ideology, a vision for where they wished to take the United Kingdom, and an ability to unify their party to deliver that vision. But by tacking left, by having these one-nation lot amongst the ERG and the other four families, the name of which escaped me at the moment, but what you might call traditional centre-right Conservatives in the Conservative Party, by having that mixture in Parliament, what they've done is made themselves incapable of navigating difficulties. Because the minute they hit a difficulty, as we did with Brexit, which was very challenging for Parliament altogether because they couldn't get their heads around delivering what the people voted for, you hit a challenge like Brexit, you hit a challenge like lockdowns, COVID lockdowns and so on, and you can't get a coherent, ideologically-based, sound response from the Conservative Party. They are not a broad church. They are a divided church. So the arguments to which you're referring, which David Davis would have them shut up about, are arguments that are coming from within their own party because they don't believe in the same things. They were always going to end up in conflict amongst themselves because they don't have a unified vision. And without a unified vision, they don't deserve to be in office. One of the examples he gave was the 1986 election. A 1987 election for Margaret Thatcher, having been very unpopular in 1986, she got a landslide in 87. She got the landslide because there was clear blue water... Between the two. ..between the two parties. Mm -hmm. You knew what the Conservative Party stood for and you knew, if you voted for it, Margaret Thatcher would deliver it. But, the, but, but, but you can't trust this party to deliver anything they promise in and they're more like Labour than ever. Well, Martin, my viewer, says if you vote reform, Michelle, it's simple. You are basically making way for a Labour government and He's reflecting, I guess, the point that I uh, mentioned to you at the start, which is Al Jinnu just not going to split the votes. Graham says, please, can you ask Ben, uh, would reform consider a Tory reform coalition? No, we're not doing any deals with the Tories. The Tories have had ample opportunity to become Conservative. If you vote Tory, you're but getting you Labour. Could, you it's could not about splitting the vote. Tory. This is not about splitting the vote. You vote Tory, you're getting Labour. You're getting Labour policies. Look at the symptoms of if our economy. If you vote reform, aren't you going to end up getting Labour? If you vote reform, there is a chance that you will get Reform UK MPs. There's a chance that this country's interests will be put first in a way that the two major parties have completely turned their backs on. The only way of making change is to vote for it. And voting for the same old people again and again, hoping that they might mend their ways, is a recipe for disaster. And the, the other line that people put to me, the Conservatives put, you know, put, 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 put out, is, we know we're awful, but Labour are worse. That's essentially the line that's being taken this evening. That is no way to govern a country. Voting for someone because they're less bad than the other lot. Vote for something you believe in. We are going to give the people of this country a genuine democratic choice between the failed policies of Labour and the Conservatives and Reform UK. So speaking about things that we believe in, uh, Rishi Sunak, he's uh, been loud and proud today. I think I can show you one of his tweets where he's basically saying that he's achieved one of his targets, which is uh, the asylum backlog. Many people within seconds, actually. So his tweet, there you go. Uh, I'll read it if you're listening. Asylum backlog backlog is cleared. Um, many people are saying that's misleading, false information and all the rest of it. Yeah, well, m many people are right. It is completely misleading. We had, um, I can't remember his first name now, but the uh, civil service um, chap responsible for migration, Ridley, I think is his surname, admitting to Lee Anderson in a parliamentary committee that actually they didn't know where 17,000 absconded asylum seekers had gone. Mm. So, well, that's 17,000 out of the numbers. Then the other trick that they play is that they decline your asylum application, but they give you leaves to stay and the ability to work, give you two or three years to stay, uh, a, a, as I understand it, and then you can apply again to stay for further periods. So th even though your asylum application has been declined, actually you're, taking out of the, you're taken out of the asylum queue and it looks like they're dealing with the asylum problem, but they haven't dealt with it. They've just sidestepped it. And then, of course, we all know that they moved away from interviews towards a completely paper-based system so they could speed through 12,000 applications. Most of those were given consent to in short order. And then the, then the last thing that they, we all know about is the government uh, uh, telling uh, interviewing officers that they shouldn't press the asylum seekers too hard if they suspect a mistruth. But because what would they you do about stressed. it, Ben? Well, you know what I would do about it, Michelle. I would Remind stop... all of my brand-new yeah. viewers that I've gained over the Christmas period. You Tell 
not deal with illegal migration through deportation. Deportation is what you do when border control has failed. So what would you do then? You have to stop the boats in the channel. You need a determined, well-trained... I, I can give you millions of ways to do it, but you well, can give me a top that. one. Give me a top well, one. Well, you need a, you need a, a well-trained bunch of guys probably ex-SBS or current SBS, who can move at speed, who can challenge people in, in the channel and use the international law that we have on our side to repel these boats back into French waters. It is an absolute affront to international law and if that the French tell you, Navy... And if people tell you, because what you're talking about, Ben, is a turn-back, pushback operation, absolutely. and immediately people will say to you, you, your policy, you are going to endanger lives in the channel. Absolutely. Lives may be endangered, but it's not us endangering those lives. The lives that are being endangered are lives that have put themselves in that position willingly, having paid money to do it, coming from a safe country. You cannot infantilize people to the point where if they put themselves in harm's way, you will bend over backwards and allow them to break the law in order to uh, avoid the harm that they have perpetuated for themselves.